Okay, this is what I came up with. Uh, I have my four my four LEDs in there, and uh, they come to this header right here. So I can put shorting blocks on these little headers to turn on one, two, three, or four, and then number five is just a storage location so I can turn them all off. So um, they are wired up to a, a current source. So I have a LM317 here with about four ohm, something like that. She can be about 300 milliamps. Um, and so constant current, I can put any compliance voltage I want on, uh, on the input. Um, and uh, I haven't wired up the output wire right now. So I'm at a point now where um, a lot of times you'll just power it on and try to make it work. But what I've found is when working around heat sinks where everything has to be isolated, these uh, LEDs can be isolated from the uh, heat sink. And I have washers on there. I have um, nylon washers on there. And this LM317, the tab is actually connected to V out. And so that needs to be isolated as well. So I've put an insulator and a, uh, a plastic washer in the uh, TO220 package to, uh, to isolate things. But when I get to this point, I always do a check, or I try to remember to do a check. I'm gonna have a continuity tester here. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit here. So. Uh, yeah, that's good enough. So I have a continuity tester, and so all the screws, everything is shorter together. So I can see if this is isolated. So I go to the minus and the plus. That one's isolated. Minus and the plus. Uh, this screw is uh, cooked, cooked to the aluminum. But if I go to each of the individual three pins, yeah, none of those are none of those are making contact. Uh, minus and plus, minus and oh. So this saved my bacon. Um, I don't know if I would have destroyed anything, but I found uh, that the plus connection on this LED is connected to this heat sink. Um, now I think the heat sink is floating, so maybe everything would be okay, but uh, yeah. So, not good. I'll have to figure out what's going on here. So let me pull those screws out. This screw looks a little munched, so let me, let me pull him out first. Let's see if that fixed the problem. Nope. Something else. So it may be my soldering. So I'm going to come along. The soldering doesn't look to be the nicest. I'm going to just kind of melt, melt this connection a bit. Let's check here again. Ah, there we go. No problem now. So it was that solder joint that was a solder joint that was a bit wonky. So let me see if I can't do a nicer job of it. That looks pretty pretty. Pretty pretty. Is that a correct way? The English language is very strange. So if you listen to the sentence, pretty little girls school. Pretty little girls school. It's four words. But there's eleven different meanings in English. So try to figure out all eleven. Alright, I like the way that one looks. Put my screw back in. Pretty little girl school, pretty little girl school, pretty little girl school. It's a pretty little girl school. Yeah, there's all kinds of all kinds of ways to say that sentence. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Yep, we're okay now. So I say. We may be ready. All right, my uh, four channel UV LED setup is ready to play with. So um, 
Again, I'm going to be going through the four different LEDs and we'll be shining them onto fluorescent materials. Um, we have a 365 nanometer, a 308 nanometer, a 265 nanometer, and a 255 nanometer. All right, so we'll turn them one on one by one and uh, show you some fluorescent rocks, uh, fluorescent minerals, I guess. I don't know if people hate being called rocks or not in the, in the community. There's a big community of, uh, of uh, this type of material. Uh, the fellow who sent me the four uh, LEDs is, is uh, building flashlights to be used for prospecting and just hobby uh, use of um, fl fluorescent materials, going out and finding rocks or collecting a rock samples and stuff and showing people. Um, they're very, very cool. Um, these remind me of the materials that I used when I was working on uh, white LEDs. White LED is a blue LED plus a phosphor. And so the phosphors are the same um, physics. There's an atom that absorbs one photon of a, of a shorter wavelength and then re-emits it at a longer wavelength. And we'll talk about that a little bit longer, but let's take a look at some of the rocks. I'll just describe what these rocks are before I turn the lights out. Um, Let's see, this rock is uh, vernerite from Quebec, Canada. Uh, this one is sodalite, maybe from Greenland. Uh, this one is fluorite. Uh, this one, not quite sure, might be hack, hackmanite. Um, this one, we're not really sure what it is. And um, this one is a very, very common one that you'll see. Uh, it's called uh, villamite. And actually, it's a combination of villamite and calcite. Um, and uh, let's turn the room lights off. Well, let me just kind of give you an idea here in the, uh, in the daylight, and then I'll turn the room lights off. So I've, I've had this uh, UV flashlight for some time. I have no idea what the wavelength in a wavelength of this is. I'm guessing it's probably around 390. It's probably longer than any of the other ones I have. But if I turn them on, I think you can see that it's that it's these things are kind of glowing, especially this one. Um, so let's turn the room lights off and it'll be much more dramatic. So here we go. Uh, you can see this one's yellow, orange. Mm, not sure about that one. This one looks like it's orange too. And uh, not much on this guy. Um, but this one is very, very nice. So not all rocks are uh, able to glow under the same stimulus. So this is a long wavelength stimulus. So let's go through our, uh, our uh, uh, materials here one by one. Let me turn the room lights back on because I want to I wanna make sure that people don't do dangerous things. Um, I, I avoid doing any high voltage uh, type of electronics work, because uh, I don't like to enable people to do things that might hurt them. Um, this stuff can hurt you. Uh, ultraviolet light is actually dangerous. Uh, it, can, uh, it can give you sunburn. Uh, it can actually modify your DNA. Uh, it can ruin your eyesight. Um, there's lots of reasons to be very, very wary of ultraviolet light. So when I was playing with these uh, LEDs before the fellow even sent, sent them to me, I, I went onto Amazon and I bought a, a pair of UV protection glasses. Um, now these are really cheap these days because a lot of people use ultraviolet light in nail salons and stuff. And so you can get UV protected. Now, in general, just a piece of plastic in front of you, is, it does kill a lot of the UV light. Um, UV doesn't like to go through plastic, but um, those are specifically designed to uh, attenuate a lot of the, uh, the UV. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it here and we'll light some of these up. All right, here I have my uh, 365 uh, nanometer light and it's glowing this yellow rock really, really nice. Uh, this uh, orange rock is, 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 is pretty cool. Uh, this one is glowing a nice blue color. And this one, just a faint, faint orange. I don't think the camera picks it up very good. Let me change the exposure level here. I think that helps a little bit. Yeah, here's the orange. Uh, here's the blue. 
Um, it suggests you wear gloves when you do things like this, but I'm not going to do it for very long. So I think I'm going to be, I'm going to be okay. All right. And then we have this piece here, which doesn't seem to, uh, doesn't seem to do much. And this one here, which isn't doing much either. Okay. So let's change wavelengths. We will go to 308. So 308 is still exciting our yellow, not as much. And uh, I'd say these, you know, this one's probably a little bit better, a little bit brighter than it was. Uh, this one's quite a bit brighter than it was. This, this blue one is, uh, is doing really, really well at 308. Uh, the orange one's doing a little bit better too, this, this, uh, this strange one. And not so much this or this. Okay, so that was, uh, that was 308. Uh, let's go to 265. All right, 265, nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, let's go way over here. And I'm going to have to hold things here. And you can see that we're just starting to get some green now on, uh, on this rock. We're getting, yeah, there we go. We're getting a nice green, nice getting a green color out of this one. All right. Okay. So that was, um, the green that was glowing is the, the villamite. All right, so now we're gonna to go to 255. Now you wouldn't think there was to be a big difference between 265 and 255, but take a look at this rock now. Um, now uh, it's, it's both red and green. Uh, so the red, the red material, which is the, uh, which is the calcite, is being uh, excited at 255. And the green, I believe the green Let's see, let me, let me look at that one. Let me go back to the, to the 265. Uh, yeah, I would say that the, the green is being, is being excited about the same, maybe even a little bit better at 265, um, but very, very close. And then we get this nice red color. So this is a very classic, this is a very classic fluorescent rock. Whoa. Okay, let's zoom in on that one. I am zoomed on the way, sorry. All right, so let's turn this guy off. And we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about some other things that fluoresce. Okay, I have two common objects here. Uh, here's some laundry detergent. There's kind of some spilling out of the spout here. And here's a white piece of paper, okay? And so um, if I put a UV uh, lamp on the paper, it glows bright blue. And if I put it on the uh, laundry detergent, it's very, very bright blue. Okay. Now um, let's talk about why these things fluoresce. They actually fluoresce on purpose. They were, they were actually put there on purpose. So um, when we view the world, we see from 400 to 700 nanometers. We don't see that ultraviolet stuff. They put fluorescent material in these so that the paper absorbs UV and then re-emits it in blue, and the paper will look whiter. It will look a whitish blue. It will, it will brighten the paper up. It will make it look brighter. Same thing with laundry detergent. If you want, your, you want your white socks to look whiter, you put this dye in it, and it absorbs ultraviolet and converts it up to blue and it makes your whites whiter in, in uh, so if you, if you look at the, 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 the label, it might say whitening on it. It used to in the old days. I don't think it even says anymore. It's just kind of a, a for granted thing. It has white whiteners in it. Um, yeah. Whitening agent, uh, fluorescent brightener 71, whatever that is. So fluorescent brightener 71 has been added to, uh, this laundry detergent. And that's what, uh, that's what glows. Oops, that's a, that's a white LED. Uh, yeah, so you can see that we get this nice, nice glow, blue glow from the uh, uh, from 71, whatever 71 is. 